What's going on today, Maureen? Let's learn how to make lacto-fermented salsa. Welcome to the farmhouse kitchen. Uh, we are making sourdough bread right now. Yeah. So there is a little bit of flour on our aprons. <laughs> what well, was like I thought you were <laughs> don't tell them we're making 16 loaves of bread for sale for tomorrow's sourdough Saturday but we do a lot of fermentation in our home yes. we do kimchi yes which we've made a video on we've done kefir no. which we've made a video on we've done sauerkraut yes which we've made a video on and that one is a carrot ginger sauerkraut which i made with emily right the kefir i made with carl eric oh right i wasn't there <laughs> that's why i said no oh and our newest one that we've added fermented pickles fermented pickles so you can look back at all the videos that we've done on fermentation of different foods and of course sourdough bread yes every week is sourdough bread with all of our fresh tomatoes, we make a salsa every single year mm -hmm. and we can it up and we use it as the base for our taco soup, yeah. which is awesome. Yeah. But with all the fermentation that we're doing, it was like, why don't we try making a fermented salsa, which is just, again, going to be bringing in those fresh probiotics. Yeah. So we're going to make a lacto-fermented salsa. I'm excited. Using a lot of the ingredients that we grew, like my gorgeous onions. That's the best that I've ever grown. And also these are, I, I think they're California Wonder. That is a jalapeno though. And this one is? That is a Caribbean red hot habanero. So we're gonna make one hot and spicy. <laughs> the rest of them will be a little bit on the... Little little bit, a little bit of spicy. Touch. And of course the tomatoes. Yeah. So my, my goal every year is to try to grow everything that we need for a salsa. Correct. And we did have cilantro. The peppers were just late. Blah, 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 I carry on. But let's get into this recipe. Mm -hmm. So the, the wonderful thing is, now that the season is over, mm -hmm. you know, now we're left to frozen tomatoes and things like that, and uh, squashes, and, and so we lose the freshness. Yeah. But the great thing about a lacto-fermented salsa is that we're going to take the beautiful tomatoes and keep them fresh and make a fresh salsa. So with this salsa, basic rule of thumb is you're just gonna make a salsa and we're gonna add in some extra salt and then we're just gonna let it sit on the counter. So that's what we're going to get going on. And we like a chunky salsa, so it's almost like a, making a pico de gallo and then adding a little extra salt so that way it can ferment properly. Um, and then it'll last us for six to nine months if we don't eat it all. Right. <laughs> okay, well, let's get started. Marissa's gonna start by chopping up um, our white onion, and I'm gonna start with our tomatoes, and they are an Italian pear-style tomato, and the seeds originate from Italy. I was out in the yard one day, and this woman walks by and starts talking about tomatoes, and she says, we have these wonderful tomato seeds that we called Nona seeds because they came from their Nona. Would you like some? And I said, yes. So four years ago, I started growing these wonderful tomatoes. So the largest one I grew was 1.25 pounds and they are a paste tomato, so not a lot of juices in them. So that is also what is really great. So I'm gonna start chopping up those. And what we're working towards is Per each jar, we want to have about three cups of diced tomatoes. And I'm going to leave them kind of chunky. These onions smell so good. They are, they do. <laughs> and they're not, um, they're not making me, my eyes water. The smallest one you did actually make my eyes water. Okay. With your tomato, you want to make sure that you cut off anything that is undesirable because we are going to keep this fresh and you want all the juices. Now, as you can see with this tomato being a paste tomato, there isn't a lot of liquid there, but I am going to, you know, capture as much as I possibly can. Fun fact about me and mom. I'm left-handed, she's right-handed. So it works very well for us to work in the kitchen together. Side by side. Side by side. But in this formation. Yes. <laughs> it wouldn't work if we were doing it the other way. Correct. Oh, these tomatoes also smell delicious. 
So how small would you like these cut? I think half that, those sizes. Because you want something that can sit on a chip, chip. right? Mm -hmm. It's different when it's in a soup and you can put it on a spoon and kind of mash it up when you need to. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. We want to get a couple of different things on the chip. We have our tomatoes all chopped up and ready to go and then all of our aromatics for making this beautiful salsa. But we wanna do things slightly different mm -hmm. and so we do have our Caribbean hot pepper. So Marissa is going to chop it up with gloves on because mm -hmm. uh, that will go into one particular jar. Mm -hmm. And so with uh, the tomatoes, I think I have about 21 cups of diced tomatoes. So I'm going to add in our green pepper. Mm. It smells absolutely wonderful. Uh, all the white onion, the jalapenos, which come from my garden. Of course, it's very good at chopping up things fine. Okay, you don't chop that up too finely because if people need to find it. Okay. <laughs> I'll it there. And some wonderful cilantro. And now, what are the benefits of having cilantro? Cilantro is a heavy metal detoxer, so it's great to have fresh and even greater fermented. Um, while you're adding the lime zest, I'm going to spritz in some garlic. And I'm also going to do our limes. Marissa is an herbalist, and uh, so she knows a lot of the ins and outs on why you want to add lacto-fermented foods to your diet. Yeah, so number one, it's really great for your gut microbiome. So this is great for your overall health and well-being. This helps keep you healthy in the winter time. It helps boost your immune system. And then on top of it, uh, it'll help also to digest your food. Now, one of the things that we're um, starting to realize is that serotonin is made in the gut. Hmm. And so when we're dealing with the winter blues and things when we're not getting enough vitamin D and being outside and the usual things that summer brings, having fermented foods can actually really help with your gut microbiome. So we have all of our beautiful things. We have our fresh garlic, green pepper, which also has some fresh green pepper from the garden, fresh white onion from the garden, fresh jalapenos, and the lime zest, and the cilantro. And we're just going to toss that all up so that we get all those gorgeous colors mixed in. And we want to have all of those tomato juices in there. And as they're extracting, that's going to make the liquid that we need. So this is a pineapple tomato and it's yellow. So I thought that I would mix it with the corn that I grew and make more of a corn type salsa. Then I'm going to add a little bit of our other salsa to it to bulk it up but letting the pineapple tomato be the feature in it with the corn. I'm just gonna put that in the jar. There it is. We thought we were pretty smart with doing that little fancy camera trick. Caribbean hot habanero.
So we have our habanero, <laughs> hot pepper, and we will use this one. Yes. Oh, did you smell that? Oh, spicy. Oh, yeah. spicy. Oh, yeah, that's spicy. Whew. Yeah, I have uh, a brother who loves spicy food. So after this, um, these utensils will be put aside. And it looks like we could have just a little bit more. So this is our Caribbean hot pepper one. So I think I should also make something so that we know that it is. We will label that jar. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I am just going to set it aside over here. So sure. That we know. We've decided to use quart and a half jars just for size wise or. Yeah, half gallon makes sense because we do eat a lot of fermented things. So it's nice when it's just in a big jar that can sit in the fridge. Mm -hmm. That looks so good. Mm. And we have just enough for a little pint jar that we'll eat with our nachos. Mm -hmm. So we have our corn salsa, regular salsa, death hot salsa. This one won't be fermented. No. Now we'll add in our pickling salt. In each quart, we're going to add one tablespoon of salt. Mm -hmm. After looking on Google, I realized that these half gallons are 1.9 quarts, nearly two. So I feel safe that we could add two whole tablespoons to them. Okay. And we'll do a half tablespoon inside of our fresh. And this is coarse. If it was fine pickling salt, then we would do half that amount. Mm -hmm. You want to use a salt that has no additives and no iodine added to it. And I'm just going to bring all the, mix the salt right in using the debubbler. I've got to go do the next stretch and fold, so I'll be right back. So, and while I'm looking at this, and we're kind of only putting the salt at the top here, things will change as they begin to bubble and whatnot, but I think what we should remind ourselves to do before we ever taste test it is to put a standard lid on it and shake it so that way, just in case the salt was sitting on the top layer, oh, that okay. it gets everywhere else so we're yeah. not having salty salsa. And I'll let you do the hot one. Thanks. No problem. So we're just gonna use the debubbler to kind of get rid of any bubbles and to let that salt kind of flow down. Mm -hmm. We are ready for the glass weights. And we got new glass weights because there's so many pickles being fermented in the house and other things. And so I just decided I'm gonna order a whole new set. Mm -hmm. So these are wonderful. I really like yeah. that they've got a little bit of nice grip on them. Mm -hmm. They are lead free yeah. and, and quite a heavyweight glass. Mm -hmm. So. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna pop one on the corn here. I'm gonna pop one on the hot. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. And what we're looking for is you wanna see exactly that. So what we're looking for is that the liquid is starting to push itself up onto the weight or over the weight. Mm -hmm. And the reason being is we want everything covered. Now this one doesn't have as much in it, so we're gonna add some water to it okay. in order to make sure that everything is covered. Okay, it smells so good. That's good. So that, I'll just lift up the lid a little bit mm -hmm. so that it's just laying on there. And then, so this will be, you know, a juicier one, yeah. if anything. Just a little bit. Yeah. So I will leave a link for the weights in the description down below so that you can order your glass fermentation weights. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna add the lids and the lids that we have, we have two different styles. 
So this one allows, it's from Ball, and it allows the air to escape, but nothing to actually come back in. Mm -hmm. Let's put that on the spicy in one of the towels. <laughs> that'll, help, that'll help to differentiate. Yes. And then we also have this style. I do not know what this is called, but it's kind of fun. Mm -hmm. And basically what I'm gonna do is I am going to add some water in here. And then there's a little apparatus that sits in here and it again allows the air to escape, but doesn't allow anything to come in. And when I talk about air, it's CO2 that is being given off. Right. It's almost like a science experiment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you can put some water, and what I'm looking for is around that little... There it says a fill line. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I'm gonna have you stop for a second, and I'm gonna add this. See if it takes it, nope. So go ahead and add more. There we go. Perfect. I'm gonna add the top to it. And it has little tiny holes, so that's what's going to let all the air out. Mm -hmm. And we will do our corn in the same manner. Mm -hmm. Cap it off. And then I absolutely love these ball leak proof jars that we have. Um, they're fantastic. And we'll just do that. <laughs> so we're going to just leave them on the counter in a warm environment in here and uh, check them in two days and see how much fermentation has started. So looking forward to that. Maybe. over recording. <laughs> uh, we didn't wait two days. <laughs> we waited seven. <laughs> we are going to do the testing mm -hmm. and we're just going to do three of them. Mm -hmm. And one of the other things to note is that it is important when you are using these style lids and actually even these ones, put it on a cookie sheet because if they drizzle over, then you're not sopping it up. Mm -hmm. To start, we have to take off the weights and then we'll do some taste testing. For sure. So I am seeing some bubbles, see little bubbles popping up over here, and which is great. It smells really good. It smells so good. It's making my mouth water. Yeah. Carefully move the weight. Okay, this one's down lower. Oh, this is the hot. This is the hot. I probably should have waited to do the hot. Mm. I almost, I, I, I'm almost thinking that the hot is not as hot. We shall see. All right, be careful. Oh, I guess I should have Hot taken this to the right. Okay. Oh, use all your muscle. Mm -hmm. And then with the one with the airlock, this is the corn. This is the corn. Mm, it's a little bit more syrupy probably yeah. due to the corn. I think so as well. So I am going to give them a stir, but I will start with this one. Now, we were noticing the separation here. Um, not sure why. Oh, it's very thick up top. Oh. So I am just going to give it a stir. Mm -hmm. That way it's going to incorporate that salt more. Mm -hmm. Oh, that smells even better. Yeah. Look at that. Ooh. And now this one, yeah, it has the same spicy. thing. Yeah. yeah, this is a spicy. Mm -hmm. And then the corn. I'm just going to stir that one up. Corn and pineapple tomato? Yeah. Alright. So I'll take some of this one. Are we ready to try? Yes. We'll try the regular. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Cheers. Mmm. I cook them like the buzzy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very good. Mm -hmm. Now the pineapple tomato and the and the corn. Sure. If I try a piece of it corn on there just to see how the raw corn reacted. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Really fizzy. Really fizzy. Mm -hmm. Very different actually. A little bit. Mm-hmm. And are you willing to try the hot? Yeah. Just a little bit. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. It's hot. Is it? Mm-hmm. Not as hot as I assumed it would be, but it's yeah. a slow burn. Yeah, but it's nice. Yeah. It's not bad. So I would definitely do the regular tomato and I would do the hot. I don't know that I would do corn again. Okay. Personally. Yeah, we've never made a mm. salsa with corn in it, no. so. 
No, but definitely it was buzzier. I'm finding that the tomato has sweetened out rather drastically. Yes. I'm not getting a hit of the raw onion personally. No. But I am getting the garlic, the cilantro, like I'm getting a, a really well-rounded flavor. Mm -hmm. But usually if you're doing a fresh salsa, you're gonna have that kick of the onion. Right. Not at all. No. But you can, st it's still there. Yes. It's just not really, mm -hmm. uh, it's not prominent. Yeah. Would we do this again? Yes, because probiotics are good for us. Mm -hmm. And this is a really great way mm -hmm. to get probiotics. In. Absolutely. No, I find it quite fun because it is buzzy. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. probably the best term for it is buzzy mm -hmm. on the tongue. Yeah. And I feel like these are fermented enough. Yeah. And I, we can, so we can cap them and then just put them in their, in their Perfect. fridge. Yeah, exactly. Um, but just again, marking. <laughs> Spicy. Spicy. And actually that spice has already calmed down for yeah. me. So. Yeah, it didn't stay. Uh-uh. It didn't stay. I wonder. Yeah. I would like to know how this works on things like have indigestion due to tomatoes. Um, if this is something that could be the workaround. That would balance out mm -hmm. the heartburn that yeah. some people get. Mm -hmm. Anyway, this was a really great experiment with, you know, with using up the last of our fresh tomatoes. Mm -hmm. And now we have this beautiful fresh salsa. So I hope that you will give it a shot and, and uh, try it out. I hope you're having a great day wherever you are and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Take care, God bless.